Next up is uh, Stefan Scherfke. Uh, he works at the uh, Office Institute in Oldenburg and is a researcher there. And he works on simulating the smart grid. He's also one of the authors of SimPy, which he is going to talk about now. So please give a warm round of applause for Stefan. Hello, <clears throat> and thanks for being here. So planning big events like uh, EuroPython is no easy task and requires lots of planning. And uh, the organizer team this year has done an amazing job so far. And to test your assumptions that you have to make be uh, made beforehand, uh, to test them, you can build a model of the conference of all the attendees and speakers and then run a simulation on that and see how your plans uh, work out. And um, if you want to do that in Python, you can use SimPy. This is a discrete event simulation library. And SimPy can, of course, not only be used for planning uh, conferences, but also for all other kinds of planning problems, uh, for example, production planning or hospital process planning. It has been used to uh, simulate multiprocessor real-time systems. I've been using it to uh, simulate electric vehicles and their charging strategies. And last year, I've heard of a guy who used it to simulate the spreading of smartphone viruses via Bluetooth. So you can do really interesting things with uh, SimPy. And SimPy is by now relatively old. It was created in 2012 by Klaus Müller and Tony Vigneault. And it was designed as a process-based discrete event simulation framework. That means that you model the, the actors that do something or that change their state over time as processes. And these processes schedule events at a discrete point in time to indicate a state change or an action that they want to perform. And in 2008, Anshu Lünsdorf, a friend and colleague of mine, and I started to contribute to SimPy. And in 2011, we became the project maintainers because Tony and Klaus wanted to retreat from the project. And the currently active version is SimPy 3, which we released in 2013 together with the shiny new logo. Um, and it's only been in the recent years that I realized that SimPy has lots of similarities between other asynchronous frameworks like Async IO from Guido, or Twisted, or Tornado. Um, what we call an environment in SimPy is usually called an event loop in the other frameworks. Mm -hmm. Our processes are very similar to tasks or coroutines, and uh, events in SimPy are really like a future or promise. And finally, we have uh, resources in SimPy, and the resource is very much like a semaphore. But in contrast to the other frameworks, we have multiple types of environments, events, and uh, resources. And since SimPy is so similar to other asynchronous frameworks, Antje thought, why not put asynchronous networking on top of it? So we created a SimPy IO with that you can use network communication in your simulation and you can simulate network communication, uh, which is not possible with the other frameworks, but uh, more on that later. The core idea of SimPy is to use uh, generator functions to model processes. Uh, who of you does not know how Python generators work? Nobody, nice, okay. So uh, I just skip over it. Um, one note, uh, usually people say working on other frameworks that the, the concept of using generators for asynchronous uh, coroutines is a new concept, but uh, SimPy used it from the beginning, so it's not really that new, but they're like 12 years old. So um, here's a simple example how a SimPy simulation uh, can look like. You start by importing SimPy after doing pip install SimPy, of course. Um, then we will define a simple clock process, which gets a uh, reference to the environment, the event loop, because in SimPy we use um, explicit event loops and no global object, because global objects are always uh, not that good and may introduce uh, hard to find bugs. Then uh, we have a name and a tick, and our clock will repeat printing the current simulation time and then uh, waiting for some time. To start our simulation, we create our event loop, our um, environment, then we start two processes, a slow clock, and the fast clock, the fast clock will print the time every half simulation time step, and the slow clock will print it every simulation step. And then we can run our simulation until we reach simulation time two, and there you can see the uh, output. Apart from the normal environment that performs the simulation as fast as possible, we also have a real-time environment, and that can be synchronized to the wall clock time uh, to, to realize real-time simulations, and that can be useful if you have hardware in the loop, or if you have human interaction with your simulation, or if you just want to analyze the real-time behavior of an optimization algorithm, for example. Um, and of course, you can create uh, 
more um, environments if you have specialized uh, requirements. So, um, as I said before, Zimbra has several event types. The most important event type for simulations is the timeout event because it lets time pass. Um, so here's an example for a conference speaker, um, which will held, um, hold a talk at a certain point in time. And it starts by yielding a timeout to wait until we start of the talk, and then it will yield another timeout event after 30 minutes to indicate the end of, its, uh, of her talk. So uh, this is really the basic event type in SimPy. And processes in SimPy are events too. That is very useful if you want to model process hierarchies. For example, here we have, again, a simplified speaker that will just uh, yield a timeout for the end of uh, her talk and then return a handout. And we now have a moderator process that will spawn speaker processes and wait for the speaker process to finish their talk. And after that, uh, start another speaker process until the session finishes. So in SimPy 3, you can use processes like, like normal events, start them, wait for them to finish. And uh, then uh, they can also pass a return value that you can uh, print, for example. Now, uh, not all speakers may just talk exactly 30 minutes. Uh, some speakers may talk slower or faster, so there need to be some way to, for the moderator to interrupt a slow speaker. And Zimpay also provides a concept for that. Here, our speaker talks for uh, randomly between 25 and 35 minutes and can be interrupted. And our moderator now uh, starts again a speaker process, but then yields uh, its own timeout for 30 minutes. And if a speaker may talk longer than 30 minutes, like in that example, the uh, moderator just interrupts the speaker and uh, stops the, the current talk. But this example has a problem is if our speaker uh, spoke less than 30 minutes, the interrupt would fail. So we should fix that, and we can do that by uh, condition events that are also new in SimPy 3. Uh, with a condition event, you can say, I'd like to wait for that event or that event, or for that event and that event and that event. So you can concatenate events with logical operators. Um, we have again the same speaker process as in the last example, but our moderator now yields a condition event that says, uh, okay, I'd like to wait until the speaker process has finished or until a timeout of 30 minutes have occurred. And then you get results back. The results is a dictionary that contains all events that have been triggered. And if our speaker process is not in the results, it has not finished yet, so we interrupt it. Um, and instead of the pipe as uh, logical or, you can also use the uh, end uh, character to say, I want to wait for two events to occur both. Um, yeah, that's the event markers on the timeline. So um, another way for processes to interact with each other are shared resources. Uh, SimPy has three categories of resources. The first one is called resources, and the uh, main type of that is also called, res called resource. And as I said before, it's very much like um, a semaphore. The main resource has two slots that are not very good visible at the slide currently. Um, so our resource here has two slots, and we have a queue in red where processes queue up. And uh, the first two processes can then just go and acquire the resource, and the third process has to wait until a slot becomes available again, and then uh, use that slot. Um, there are specialized types of resources. One is the priority resource, where processes in the queue are sorted by priority. And another specialization is the preemptive resource, where processes, important processes, can kick existing users out of the resource. Um, the third, uh, second category of resources is called Restore. Restore is similar to the resource, but instead of storing process tokens, it can store arbitrary Python objects, and it has two queues, one for processes that want to put something in and one for processes that want to get something out. So in that example, a process uh, puts an object into our store, and another process can then grab that object and get it out of the store. Uh, we also have a filter process where uh, processes can define a filter function to only get certain types of objects from the store. For example, if you store like machines in the store, you can say I only want to uh, use machines that are uh, currently uh, functioning and not broken, for example. And uh, finally, there's the container. A container stores a, concrete, a discrete or continuous amount of some homogeneous uh, abstract matter, so it can be used to store like apples or water, for example, and 
In that case, uh, a process may put two liters of water into our container. Another process uh, wants to get three liters out, but uh, out, but has to wait until another process puts two more liters in, so uh, that it can uh, get the amount, the requested amount, out of the container. Um, so these are the three types of resources that we have in Zimpy. You can, of course, extend that with, with uh, other types of resources if you need them. And now that we know the, the building blocks of which you can compose a simulation, I'd like to show you a more, uh, a little bit more complex example of a conference attendee, how you can model that with Simpy. Uh, we start, of course, by importing stuff and then uh, doing some configuration. In our world, we have a continuous flow of uh, talk sessions, and each session consists of three talks, and each talk is uh, 30 minutes long, and after three talks, we'll have a break of 15 minutes. And our attendees uh, will also receive an environment uh, again. They will have a name, and they start with an initial knowledge of uh, zero, and they are not hungry in the beginning. And during the talks, they gain more knowledge, but also get more hungry. And the hungrier they are, the less knowledge they gain, because you know, if you're hungry, you just cannot uh, uh, keep your attention up. So um, we start with a while loop that loops over all sessions, and uh, within that while loop, there's a for loop for each talk, one iteration, and we get a random amount of new knowledge, and we get more hungry, and then we yield a timeout for the end of our talk, and after the three sessions, we just print how much knowledge we've gained and how hungry we are now. And then we go to the buffet, grab some random amount of food, and reduce our hunger, and wait again until the break is over to go to the next session, and reprint a, a little status message again. Starting with simulation is easy. We just create an environment, start five attendee processes, and run the simulation for a few hours. And the output of that may look like that. Um, you can see that the four attendees gain different amount of knowledge, and they get hungry. And after the break, when they have eaten something, they are not as hungry anymore and can gain more knowledge, as you can see in the second block. So uh, that was already relatively interesting, but we didn't gain any new insights about uh, organizing our conference. So we should maybe model the buffet in more detail to, to see whether our buffet is big enough or if people have to queue up and starve to death. So uh, that's not what we want. So uh, let's add a buffet to our simulation. Uh, we have two new configuration variables. One is for the duration of eating. That is uh, three minutes. Um, and our buffet will have one slot, so only one person can get food at a time, and the others have to queue up. And the signature of our attendee process now also has a reference to the buffet. The um, part of uh, for visiting talks is the same as in the last example, but uh, now the part for getting to the buffet gets more interesting. We create a request for our buffet here in a context manager uh, with a risk statement, and using the risk statement, we don't have to release our buffet when we are done. So uh, you, uh, you should always use RIS. If you don't use RIS to request a resource, you have to explicitly call resource release when you are done. And to avoid that, we use a RIS statement. And then we yield a condition event to wait either until we get to the buffet or until 12 minutes of the break have passed. Because if we wait more than 12 minutes, we won't have enough time to eat our food. And it makes no sense to wait uh, any longer. And when we get resumed, we check how long we've waited, and then check whether we made it to the buffet. A buffet. If yes, we uh, grab some food again and yield an event for the duration of our eating process. Uh, print a nice status message again, and we are done. And uh, if we had bad luck and didn't get to the buffet, we get a penalty of one hunger because we could just stare at the food but don't eat anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's so sad. Um, um, so and then we print a status message and wait until the break is over. And when we start our simulation, it looks like in the last example, but we also create a, a buffet resource here with a capacity of one. And the output now looks, uh, again, similar like in the last example, but you can see that attendee number four didn't make it to the buffet, uh, couldn't reduce its hunger, and thus gains the least knowledge in, this, in the following session uh, compared to all other attendees. So it, uh, yeah, and it's really hungry after the conference. So. Uh, very unhappy attendee, and we know that we should add more slots to our buffet in order to make every every attendee happy. And uh, I think the organizer team this year has made a great job with the buffet, food delicious, and enough slots. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, that's the example. Um, now I'd like to get back to Simba.io. Um, Simba.io is an event-driven 
networking library uh, on top of SymPy. And with that, you can, for example, model multi-agent systems. And these multi-agent systems can be distributed over multiple uh, systems or processors and use network communication CCP sockets to communicate with each other. But you can also just simulate the communication between your agents and, uh, for example, uh, look how they behave if there's a big latency between messages or if messages drop. So uh, this is very, very cool for evaluating your, your distributed algorithms. And SimpIO also implements web sockets, so you can add a web visualization for your simulation to, to make some nice graphics in the browser, for example. And SimpIO is still in a very early stage. It's already workable, but doesn't have a lot of documentation yet, and the APA may still change, but roughly, uh, using SymPIO looks like that. You just yield instead of a timeout a send event or a message receive event in order to say SymPy, okay, I'd like to wait until I got a new message or I got uh, my message is sent. So it's not not that difficult, and I, I, I've already used it in a production system, and it's really cool and relatively fast. Um, yeah, our plans for the future. Of course, keeping the community happy, helping everyone who has questions, implementing all the features that uh, people want, if they make sense, of course. Uh, we also have some minor optimizations in the pipeline for some speed improvements. Uh, we are continuously working on our documentation um, and currently we're discussing adding some helper functions for, for helping you monitoring your simulation, especially if you want to monitor the usage of uh, resources, but um, there's nothing uh, decided yet. So some final notes. I hope that I could show you that SymPy is really easy to use and flexible. SymPy has lots of documentation. I'm really proud of our documentation because we have a tutorial, we have lots of examples, we have topical guides and an API reference. Um, we have also a mailing list and uh, of course your yeah, stack overflow where you can also ask questions. And we have quite an extensive test suite that uh, makes sure everything works as expected and that can also be used as a reference of how things should work. Um, yeah, Python is, uh, SymPy is uh, written in pure Python and it supports Python 2.7 and 3.2 and above and it also has no external dependencies so installing it is really very, very easy and fast. Um, since it's pure Python, we support all kinds of other interpreters like JSON or PyPy for example. PyPy can give you huge performance improvements if you have a longer running simulation. And there's also a port of SymPy to Sizen, so you can get an additional uh, performance improvements by compiling SymPy to C. And since a few months, there's also a project called SymSharp, which has ported SymPy to C Sharp, which is all, uh, also kind of cool uh, if people fork you to another language. So, uh, yeah, and there's SymPy O that you can use for, for adding socket communication to your simulation. So, um, that's all. Go to Bitbucket or docs dot org to grab it and uh, yeah thanks for being here so if you have any questions you may also raise your arm okay. in the field of uh, computational chemistry uh, researchers use uh, packages like Tinker, Games, Gromax, and others to, to do a molecular dynamic simulations or Monte Carlo simulations of uh, chemical or biochemical uh, processes. Do you know about the applications or uses of SymPy for computational chemistry? Or if there are people that use this package for computational chemistry? Um, no, not directly. A colleague of mine uses Monte Carlo simulation and he doesn't use SymPy for that because if you uh, have just single processes that don't really interact with other processes or don't use resources, uh, you don't really need SymPy. So in that case, you may be better off with just using a while loop where your process updates its state after each uh, time step or delta of time. So um, I think you may use, so you, you, could, you could use SymPy for that, but maybe uh, it's just too much and you can just use plain Python standard library to, to do that. Um, and if you want to use uh, continuous simulation with differential equations, SymPy also does not really offer anything to help you 
uh, with that. So the main focus of Simpler really is discrete event simulation or discrete time simulation where processes interact somehow with each other or use shared resources. That's where Simpler really helps you. Hi, uh, and first, thanks for the talk and your work on this package. I like it. Um, I have a question about um, interdependent events. Uh, what's the way, best way to reschedule them if, you, if needed? For instance, a server is sending a file then over a, a limited uh, bandwidth, and then it starts um, sending another file. And of course, this delays the arrival times of other files. Uh, so what's the best way to do it? So uh, you want to know if I already schedule an event and wait for that event, and now I'd like to wait for another event. Yes, and something happens that probably cancels that new, uh, yeah. old event or just delays it or whatever. Yeah. Um, there are several ways to do it. Um, one way to do this is uh, interrupting a process that waits for an event and then tell them, okay, please wait for another event. Um, or that is the process that waits for the, the event itself cannot do that by itself, so it has to really wait for the interrupt. And if the process itself wants to become active, it should do something like yielding a condition event where it says, okay, I'd like to wait for that event, and if it takes too long, then I'd like to for something else, and for that you can use the, the condition events. So you either condition events or interrupts by another process. Or maybe uh, just a refactory simulation and just implement another process called I don't know, network cable which just uh, uh, handles all these delays. But it's because it has a reference to all the events and can yeah. just say, okay, cancel event and just uh, create a new event yeah. uh, um, further in the future. You, you could do that by implementing a new type of event, but once a process yields an event, it really waits until the event occurs and then it gets resumed. Uh, the only exception to that is if it gets interrupted by, by the event loop. But uh, if you create a special event type, where the condition under which the event triggers can be changed uh, depending on whether uh, one thing uh, happens or another thing happens, then you can also uh, achieve your goal. So it should be possible. Okay, thanks. Hi. Uh, I got actually two questions. The first one, uh, do you have some tools to uh, model the statistical discrete distributions like points on something, or am I supposed to use something like SciP? Or, and the second one, do you have some built-in visualization tool, uh, tools, or should I use my... Could, could you please speak a little bit louder? Louder? Okay. Yeah. So, okay, once more, do you have some built-in um, tools for modeling discrete distributions, statistical distributions, or am I supposed to use SciP? Because SciP is like real big package, and if you try to implement it on the platform where you can't install that, it's like quite a huge thing, and it has a lot of binary dependencies and stuff. And it could be quite useful if I had like some basic basic bunch of uh, statistical distributions to model it, to model um, timeouts. Do you understand what I mean? Um. Simpy doesn't have built in any distributions, but uh, you can use the uh, random distributions provided by the standard library or by SciPy. So Simpy is really just a small package and tries to focus on the, the modeling of processes and event loop and everything that goes beyond that uh, is left to, to libraries that are better in that than, than we are. So why should we rebuild distribution, random distributions if they are already very well uh, done in SciPy or NumPy or Python standard library? Okay, I understand. So the answer is no. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I think you got the same policy for, for visualization or something. Hmm? You've got the same policy for visualization. I mean, it yes, could yes, be quite true. cool to see how, how uh, your system develops with time and such stuff. Yeah, Simpy used to have some kind of visualization uh, built in, but uh, it really looked not that good as Matplotlib or D3.js in the browser. So we just uh, said, okay, we, we uh, exclude that from Simpy and don't maintain it anymore. And collecting data from a simulation is relatively easy. You just pass, for example, lists or NumPy dictionaries, uh, NumPy arrays into your processes and then append data. And after your simulation is done, you just pass these lists or arrays to your visualization like Matplotlib uh, and then uh, let it do the visualization. So uh, that's the better approach. Okay, again. Thank you. Yeah, any more questions? No, then thank you again, Stefan. Thank you.